Continuing the NBA Draft Best Team Fit Series, now up the San Antonio Spurs now that they are officially knocked out of the play-in and playoffs contention and they are locked into a lottery spot. Without running the lottery, they're likely to get the ninth pick in the draft. If someone were to jump in, they might get the 10th or 11th, but that's going to be the general range for them. Looking at the Spurs roster and depth chart, I think it's pretty balanced, especially in their top five or six guys that they are going to build around for the future. They just don't have a lot of depth, but I think that's okay because that means they can be flexible in the draft. And especially when they're in the bottom of the top 10, guys are going to get taken that are high on their board before them. So they're going to have to go with some alternative options. Looking at the center position, most specifically, Jock Landale and Yaka Pertle, I think are actually pretty good and underrated, but I think they're good rotation bigs. I don't think they're long-term starters. And I think that's where Jalen Dern comes in as the number one prospect on the Spurs board. If the Spurs are drafting at pick nine or 10, I don't know if Jalen Dern honestly falls that far. He, to me, he's a top five or six prospect. And I don't know if he goes past the Blazers. But one thing that could make Jalen Dern slide a little bit is that he is going to be 18, one of the younger prospects in the entire draft class. And he might be more of a long-term project, but the Spurs are obviously okay with that. They took Josh Primo in last year's draft at 18 years old, and he's now the youngest player in the NBA right now. So clearly, not only are are they in it for a long project? They trust their front office and player development. Jalen Dern is a monster. He's a strong and forceful big with a very classic style from the 90s or 2000s. He's got a 7'5 wingspan, ability to be a top rim runner. Physically, he has everything you want in a center to not have many questions on rebounding and being that anchor on both ends of the floor. But on top of that, he's also shown incredible signs of developing his style to adapt the modern game. His mid-range is good with the foundation of showing even more improvement, and he has good playmaking out of the post too. There really aren't any other bigs that high in the draft class besides Chet Holmgren, who's going to go in the top three. If the Spurs got a top three pick they'd obviously be more than happy with Chet but other than Mark Williams who's sneaking close to the lottery but I don't think he's going to be anywhere near the top 10 there's no one else to take as a big so if they want to take one for the future Jalen Dern is going to be their guy Spurs also don't have a lot of outside scoring talent. They were 29th in three-point volume this year. They were 26th in total points from threes this season. I do think guys like Kelvin Johnson and Devin Vassell, who are good shooters, are showing even more signs of breaking out. But adding another outside scoring wing would be good, and there's a lot of them in the bottom of the top 10 in their draft. Amongst the wing scores, Benedict Mathern from Arizona should definitely be number one on the Spurs draft board. He's a super explosive athlete who can score on all three levels. He shot 38% from three in his two years at Arizona, and 47% of his shots were from three over the course of his two years. He's gotten more and more comfortable shooting the outside shot. He can score off the bounce. He's very easy to fall in love with. He has a really, really good motor. He's going to do both ends of the floor work, and I think he'd be a great fit in San Antonio. I mentioned some longer-term, younger projects like Jalen Dern before that I compared to Josh Primo pick last year, and I think Shaden Sharp would be the same kind of pick for sure. He hasn't played a single game in college. All we know of him is everything beforehand in his AAU high school international play. He is experimenting with the draft process, and I think as long as he knows he's going to be in the top 10, it's going to be hard for him to even go back to school at all. He's a really exciting athlete. He's bouncy. He can play above the rim. His progression of his outside game has been incredible over the last couple of years. He could be somewhat of a project, like I said, but I don't think they should be scared at all because they have really, really good player development, and he would fit in very nicely with the roster. I'm not an AJ Griffin top five guy like many people are. I do have him in my top 10 and I understand the excitement why he might be a top five or six pick and he very likely will be gone by the time the Spurs are drafting if they're at nine or 10, but he should still be on their board going into draft night. AJ is super young. He's going to be 18 when he gets drafted. He can light it up from three, especially in the catch and shoot. And he thrives off ball, which we saw so easily at Duke. And I think that translates very well to the NBA because he doesn't command a large role. And with DeJounte Murray running their offense, he can play very, very well and complement their offense. Going back to the depth chart, I don't think at power forward, they're very, very strong past Kelvin Johnson. And I wouldn't put it past them to take a guy like Jeremy Sohan. He is going to be young. He's super versatile. He's got a great motor. You guys have heard me talk about him in ample opportunity. And if a lot of guys that I mentioned are going to be gone before the Spurs pick at 9 or 10, which is a possible situation, a guy like Jeremy Sohan at 9 or 10 does not shock me at all. This is obviously all barring no major changes. DeJounte Murray's been in and out of trade rumors for a couple of years now, but nothing really concrete. But if for some reason they were to move off DeJounte Murray, I really don't think it's going to happen. But if they did, I think Dyson Daniels would be a really, really intriguing international playmaker out of the G League Ignite that would fit very well as well. So that puts my final Spurs board at Jalen Dern at one, Benedict Matherin, Shaden Sharp, and AJ Griffin falling behind. And then a guy like Jeremy Sohan or even Jaden Hardy from G League Ignite as a deeper sleeper option in case things go wild on draft night in the top 10. Appreciate y'all as always for giving me the support and watching these videos. A lot of NBA draft content still coming your way. Make sure to comment which team you want to see next and what they should do on draft night. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any other videos that come out. Hope you guys have a great week. Peace.